A pleasant day to everyone, especially to the panel of evaluators and our thesis seminar professor, Ma'am Rolaila B. De Lovino. I'm Mark Kevin G. Santos, speaking of Master of Arts in Education, Major in General Science. So for this morning, I am going to present my three concept papers, but before that, allow me to share this Bible verse from Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for men. So let us remember Jesus in our hearts and in our names as we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, Holy One, your desire is for our wholeness and well-being. We hold in tenderness and prayer the collective suffering of all the world at this time. We grieve precious lives lost and vulnerable lives threatened. We ache for ourselves and our neighbors, standing before an uncertain future. We pray that may love, not fear, will go viral. Inspire our leaders to discern and choose wisely, align with the common good. Help us to practice social distancing and reveal to us new and creative ways to come together in spirit and in solidarity. Call us to profound trust in your faithful presence. You, the God who does not abandon. You, the Holy One, breathing within us, breathing among us, and breathing around us in our beautiful yet wounded world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the vision statement of Wesleyan University, Philippines, by 2024, Wesleyan University, Philippines is a Methodist institution of learning that fosters academic excellence, transformative research, servant leadership, environmental stewardship, and globally competitive healthcare services imbued with social holiness. For the university's mission statement, Wesleyan University Philippines provides quality education and compassionate health care services imbued with Wesleyan spirituality to produce competent graduates committed to the healing of persons and the whole of creation for the glory of God. To formally start my presentation, so allow me to present my first Concept paper entitled, Effects of Using Online Distance Learning via Zoom Application in Teaching General Biology 1 During the COVID-19 Pandemic. For the introduction, online learning encompasses a range of technologies such as the World Wide Web, email, chat, news groups, and text, or joint video conferencing delivered over computer networks to import education. Online learning originated to fulfill the demand for education by those who would not be able to participate in face-to-face -face classes. According to Cohen and Elise, emerging technologies allow instructors and students as well as student-student connection in real-time and time-delayed alliance. Several techniques were used to deliver the distance program for a period of time. First-generation distance education basically depends on print-based education, whereas second-generation distance education evolved to print and broadcasting system. Third-generation distance education is heavily dependent on web-based tools, such as web conferencing, which enables students and teachers to be more efficient in terms of communication. For the statement of the problem, this, state, this study aims to determine the effects of online distance learning by a Zoom application to senior high school students towards their learning achievement in general biology 1. Specifically, it seeks to answer the following questions. How may the profile of the grade 12 respondents be described in terms of age, sex, number of hours spent in online distance learning, and estimated monthly family income. What types of instructional methods are used by the teacher teaching general biology one virtually via the Zoom application? How may the Zoom application be assessed in terms of functionality, accessibility, 
technicality, mobile design, and privacy, data protection, and rights. What are the achievements in general biology one of the senior high school learners before and after the use of Zoom application in online learning? Is there a significant relationship between the profile of the respondents and their achievements in general biology one utilizing the online distance learning via Zoom application? Is point number six, is there a significant difference on the achievements in general biology one before and after using the Zoom application in online learning? For the hypothesis of the study, point number one, there is no significant relationship between the profile of the respondents and their achievements in general biology one utilizing the online distance learning via Zoom application. Number two, there is no significant difference on the achievements in general biology one before and after using the Zoom application in online learning. For the conceptual framework, so as you can see, I will use the input process and output model. So as you can see, for the input, we can uh, see here the profile of the respondents, the instructional methods used by the teacher utilizing the Zoom app, as well as the assessment of Zoom applications in terms of different parameters. For the process, so we have the utilization of Zoom application wherein the selected respondents will uh, use or utilize the Zoom application in teaching or learning general biology one. And then for the output, so we have the effects of online distance learning by Zoom application in teaching general biology one. For the scope and the limitation, the study is limited to the student's utilization of Zoom application in online learning and its effects on their achievements in the subject general biology one. The study will also be limited to grade 12 senior high school students of San Ricardo National High School in the Congressional District of Talavera, Nueva Ecija. The study will be conducted during the second semester of school year 2020-2021. For the significance of the study, school administrators, the result will serve as a basis in initiating progress intended to evaluate and assess area that needed to be improved, as well as to identify difficulties and obstacles encountered in implementing online learning. It will also help in the creation of practical suggestions to remedy the problems encountered during the implementation of online learning using different online platforms. For the teachers, this may help teachers to propose concepts from a scientific approach and to what extent the method of teaching contributes to the achievement of improved science learning. It will also help them to set the development of bonding appreciation of materials and devices to arouse their curiosity and engagement. For the learners, the findings of this study will allow them to continue science exper experiences by going deeper into the fun and knowledge of the subject using technology as a bridge in teaching and learning. And for the future researchers, the result of this study will serve as reference to similar researches in science but with other content areas. So here are the terms that will be used in the study. For number one, we have the age. It refers to the amount of time during which a person lived. Next is the number of hours spent in online learning. This is the duration of time per day used by students as their age in acquiring information virtually. For number three, we have the estimated monthly family income. This refers to the annual savings of the family of the respondents. And then we have the online learning. This refers to learning that takes place over the internet. It is often referred to as e-learning among others. Sex. It refers to the distinction between male and female and other who do not have biological characteristics typically associated with either the male or female sex as reported by a respondent. Zoom application. This refers to a web-based video conferencing tool with local, desktop client, and a mobile application that allows users to meet online with or without video. COVID-19, an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus strain. For the research design, so this study will use the quasi-experimental research design, which sought to investigate possible cause and effect relationship by surveying the grade 12 senior high school students regarding their observations 
about uh, the effects of using the Zoom application in online learning. So as you can see, uh, this study will be using 53 respondents. All of them will come from the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics strand in the senior high school. For the research locale, the study will be conducted at San Antonio National High School at the Congressional District 1 of Nueva Ecija. For the sampling procedure, this research will utilize a purposive sampling wherein all grade 12 students enrolled in the school year 2020-2021 will serve as the respondents. They will be selected as respondents based on their interest in science subject and in their utilization of the Zoom application in learning the concepts of General Biology 1. For the research instrument, I am going to use a questionnaire. The questionnaire that I will be going to use is composed of three parts. For the part 1, profile of the grade 12 student respondents can be found. This will be accomplished by student respondents by supplying the needed information regarding their age, sex, estimated family income, and the number of hours they spend in online learning. For part two, this includes the assessment of the respondents on the Zoom application in terms of functionality, accessibility, mobile design, and privacy, data protection, and rights. For part three, this is a researcher's lead test which aims to assess the learning achievement of grade 12 senior high school students in general biology 1. The test consisted of 50 multiple choice questions aligned to the students for general biology 1 during the first quarter of the second semester of school year 2020-2021. For the reliability of the instrument, the researcher will conduct a test for test method. The researcher will give the research instrument to the respondent after a three-week survey as post-test measurement. The sperm and row will be used by the researcher to prove the reliability of the study. For the data gathering procedure, the researcher will secure a permit to the school's division superintendent of Nueva to conduct the survey. After securing the permit, the researcher will ask permission to the principal to allow him to administer the questionnaire personally to the respondents to give them background information. The consent among the student respondents will be given before the actual pre-test and data gathering and they were asked to accept or reject the process. The pre-testing of the general biology 1 exam will be conducted among grade 12 senior high school guest students to determine the validity of the questions. After the results of pre-testing, the actual data gathering will be done among grade 12 senior high school STEM students. The research instrument utilized in this part of data gathering will be the approved and valid general biology 1 ex examination. Pre-testing among grade 12 senior high school was conducted or will be conducted in 30 minutes to complete the answers. Three weeks after pre-testing, the post-test examination will be conducted immediately to assess the learning of the students. After data gathering and coding, tabulation, computation, and analysis of data will be done. For the statistical treatment of data, frequency and percentage will be used in describing the social demographic profile of the respondents. In determining the learning achievement of student respondents in general biology 1, the pre-test and post-test will be analyzed using p-test while sperm and row will determine the significant relationship between the student's profile and their learning achievement in general biology 1. The following skills will be used by the researcher to rate Zoom application that affects the respondent's achievements in general biology 1. So we have this a Likert scale. For 1, the verbal description is not understood. For a scale of 2, which has a range of 1.80 to 2.59, the verbal description is less understood. For the scale of 3, which has a range of 2.60 to 3.39, the verbal description is moderately understood. For a scale of 4, which has a range of 3.4p e to 4.19, the verbal description is understood, while for a scale of 5, which has a range of 4.20 to 5, the verbal description is very well understood. So that sums up my first concept paper. For my second research title, 
So the title is The Level of Emotional Intelligence of Senior High School Grade 12 STEM Students During the COVID-19 Pandemic. For the introduction, the way people understand and identify emotions can affect their relationship with others, coping with things, and especially for the students on their education. It is not only intelligence that can affect how lives work, but also our emotions. Emotional intelligence, or EI, is a model introduced by Daniel Goleman. It refers to the ability to recognize and understand emotions in oneself and others, and the ability to use that awareness to manage behaviors and relationships. The model has five concepts, self-awareness, self-regulation, social skill, empathy, and motivation. For the statement of the problem, for number one, what is the level of the emotional intelligence of senior high school students at San Ricardo National High School? Number two, what are the social demographic characteristics of the respondents in terms of the following? Age, gender, their strength, sibling position, father's educational attainment, mother's educational attainment, annual family income, and area of residence. For number three, what are the levels of the critical factors of the respondents in terms of the following? Self-awareness, self-regulation, social skill, empathy, and motivation. And for the fourth question, what are the levels of the emotional intelligence of the respondents with respect to their social demographic profiles? Next, what are the effects of the emotional intelligence of the respondents to the following? School, teachers, other students, and then their academic performances. Number six, is there a significant difference on the level of emotional intelligence between the introverts and the extroverts? For the hypothesis of the study, number one, there is no significant difference on the level of emotional intelligence between the introverts and the extroverts. For the conceptual framework, I am going to use the input, process, and output model wherein in the input, we consider the profile of the respondents. For the process, we have the identification of the problem, construction of the questionnaire, the data gathering, which includes survey, as well as the analysis and interpretation of data gathered. Why the output? So we have the level of emotional intelligence of grade 12 STEM students of San Ricardo National High School for the school year 2020-2021. Why the scope and the limitation? This study is limited to the profiling of the emotional intelligence of the senior high school students of San Ricardo National High School for the school year 2020-2021. It is also limited to the effects of the emotional intelligence to the school, teacher, other students, and their academic performances. It will be conducted for over approximately two months. The respondents will involve only 50 senior high school grade 12 students under the STEM strand. For the significance of the study, this study will benefit the following students. This will help them to identify their abilities in handling their emotions. By knowing and understanding their emotional intelligence, the students can find ways to enhance their strengths as well as improve their weaknesses in terms of handling emotions in different situations. For the parents, this will help them to understand and guide their children in terms of handling their emotion under pressure. They can also find remedies and ways to the common emotional problem of their children. For the teachers, this will help them on assisting the students in handling their emotions properly. In addition, by knowing the emotional intelligence of the students, the teachers will have the opportunity to enhance their role as guidance counselor to all the students. School administrators, this will help them in proposing activities like camping, team building, and seminars, projects, and the like that will help in improving the abilities of the students in handling their emotions. And for the future researchers, this will serve as basis for the future research and developing the emotional intelligence of the students. 
The study will enhance their knowledge and awareness to the emotional intelligence of the senior high school students at San Ricardo National High School and its affected school, teacher, other students, and their academic performance. These are the terms that will be used in the study. For the first one, academic performance. It refers to how well a person performs in school. Next is empathy. It refers to the ability of an individual to understand the emotional state of other people. Emotional intelligence. It refers to the ability to recognize and understand emotions in oneself and others, and the ability to use that awareness to manage behavior and relationships. Motivation. It refers to the general desire of an individual to achieve his or her goals and what he or she wants. Self-awareness. It refers to the ability of an individual to understand personal moods and emotions as well as the strengths, weaknesses, values, goals, and drives. Next is self-regulation. It refers to the ability of an individual to control or redirect disruptive impulses and moods while trying to adapt to changing circumstances and the propensity to suspend judgment and to think before acting. Social skill. It refers to the ability of an individual to build and have harmonious relationship with the people around him or her. Social demographic profile. It refers to the characteristics of populations such as age, gender, strength, sibling position, father's educational attainment, mother's educational attainment, annual family income, and area of residency. For the research design, the study will use the descriptive research design which sought to investigate the level of emotional intelligence among grade 12 STEM students. The respondents of the study will be the grade 12 senior high school students in San Ricardo National High School in Congressional District 1. It will be conducted on the second semester of school year 2020-2021. The respondents will take the myers Gibbs personality test to determine whether they are introvert and extrovert. For the research locale, the study will be conducted at San Ricardo National High School in Congressional District 1 of Nueva Ecija. For the sampling procedure, this research will utilize a purposive sampling wherein all grade 12 STEM students enrolled in the school year 2020-2021 will serve as the respondents. They will be selected as respondents based on the type of their personality and will be assessed or will assess their level of emotional intelligence in the study during the COVID-19 pandemic. For the research instrument, the main tool which will be used in this study will be a research-made questionnaire, checklist. The set of questionnaire will be composed of three parts. Part 1 seeks to gather information concerning the social demographic profile of the respondents. Part 2 will be about the independent variables of the study or the critical factors of emotional intelligence. And part 3, considered as the open-minded question regarding on how to improve the level of emotional intelligence of the student. It will be in the form of Likert skill wherein the respondents chose and rated the level of their perception by putting a check on it. So there are the degrees in the Likert skill, 1 is the lowest, and 5 is the highest. For the data gathering procedure, the questionnaire will be administered to the respondents with the permission of the principal and respective instructor. The instructions and content in the instrument and the purpose of the study will be explained clearly to the respondents before they answer them, so that correct responses could be evoked from them. Respondents' confidentiality will be assured. The questionnaire will be retrieved after the administration. For the statistical treatment of data, the data will be tallied and presented in tabular forms using the frequency count and percentage. To determine the degree of respondents' reactions and the round of verbal responses of each item, the weighted mean will be computed. So that is my second concept paper. And for my third and last concept paper, the title is Relationship Between the DOST-SEI Results and Academic Performance in Science and Mathematics of Grade 12 STEM Students of San Ricardo National High School. For the introduction, attainment of higher education is an important milestone in a person's life. However, the transition from senior high school to college can be stressful and students' beliefs about their fate during the course of this transition can become a source of stress. 
Another evolution is the adaptation of college instructor to a new pedagogy called outcome-based education. In order to be at par with the global teaching learning methods and competitiveness, the Commission on Higher Education required the application of this scheme in Philippine universities and colleges in 2012 to Child Memorandum Order No. 46. This paradigm of teaching is student-centered rather than lecture-based as in the conventional approach. This new approach in education is the main thrust of college institutions in the Philippines today and is adopted to make sure that students and graduates will be well-equipped and prepared for the real world. Students who want to become college scholars may apply for scholarships. The Science and Technology Undergraduate Scholarship Program aims to stimulate and entice talented Filipino youths to pursue lifetime productive careers in science and technology and ensure a steady, adequate supply of qualified science and technology human resources which can steer the country towards national progress. Republic Act No. 7687, also known as the Science and Technology Scholarship Act of 1994, provides for a scholarship to talented and deserving students whose families Social economic status do not exceed the set path of values of certain indicators. Qualifiers must pursue priority fields of study in the basic sciences, engineering, other applied sciences, and science and mathematics teaching. For the statement of the problem, this study aims to determine the relationship between the DOS's SEI scores and the academic achievement of grade 12 students of San Ricardo National High School in Science and Mathematics. Specifically, it seeks to answer the following questions. Number one, how may the profile of the grade 12 respondents be described in terms of age, sex, estimated monthly family income? Number two, what is the level of performance of grade 12 students in the DOST SEI scholarships in the areas of science and mathematics? Next, what is the academic achievement of grade 12 students in the areas of science and mathematics? Number four, what is the relationship of the academic achievement of grade 12 students in science and mathematics and their level of performance in DOST SEI Merit Scholarship? Number five, is there a significant relationship between the academic achievement of grade 12 students in science and mathematics and their level of performance in the Merit Scholarship? And this will be the hypothesis of the study. There is no significant relationship between the academic achievement of grade 12 students in science and mathematics and their level of performance in DOST SEI Merit Scholarship. For the conceptual framework, so I am going to use, just like the first two concepts, I am going to use the input process and output model. Wherein in the input model, we can find here the profile of the respondents. And then for the uh, process so it includes the administration of the uh, the questionnaire and then for the output this includes the strategies to improve the passing rate of grade 12 students in merit scholarship programs such as the DOST SEI the scope and delimitation will be limited to the relationship between the DOSD SEI results and academic performance in science and mathematics of grade 12 students of San Ricardo National High School. The study will also be limited to grade 12 senior high school students of San Ricardo National High School in the Congressional District of Calavera, Nueva Ecija. The study will be conducted during the second semester of school year 2020-2021. For the significance of the study, so this study will benefit the following. For the teachers, providing the instructors an assessment of the academic performance of students in science and mathematics will help them get a closer look of the students' ability and strategize on teaching methodologies. For the school administrators, the results of this study could serve as a basis for syllabus improvements, curricular development, and admission program. This study will also guide them in establishing evaluation of students' performance. For the guidance counselors, this study will lead them to determine services that will assist the entrants in their choice of career and the freshman students in coping up with their academic performance. And for the students, through an assessment of their performance, they may be able to realize their deficiencies and be able to find ways to improve it. Results of this investigation may be able to assist them in knowing what they need or have to do to attain their desired goal in college and probably later on in life. So these are the terms that will be used in the study. 
For the first one, we have the age. It refers to the amount of time during which a person lived. Estimated monthly family income. This refers to the annual savings of the family of the respondents. For the sex, it refers to the distinction between male and female and other who do not have biological characteristics typically associated with either the male or female sex as reported by a respondent. Next is science, the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. And lastly, we have mathematics, the abstract science of number, quantity, and space. Mathematics may be studied in its own right, or as it is applied to other disciplines such as physics and engineering. For the research design, this study will use a descriptive quantitative research using the data gathered from the report card of the grade 12 STEM students. The scores in the DOST SEI Merit Scholarship Program will be taken from the students also. The data will be processed through the use of statistical package for social sciences or SPSS to obtain the mean, standard deviation, and coefficient of correlation, and its significance set at 0.05 alpha level for two failed tests. For the research locale, the study will be conducted at San Ricardo National High School in the Congressional District 1 of Nueva Ecija. For the purpose of this study, if the grade 12 STEM students who are enrolled at San Ricardo National High School during the second semester, academic year 2020-2021, and took the admission examinations for the same academic year will be taken as the sample. The respondents' performance in the admission examination of DOST will be taken from their scores in the 150 item entrance examination. The students' grades in science and mathematics will be secured from the grading sheets submitted by their subject teachers at the end of the semester. For the research instrument, questionnaire which will be developed by the researcher will be the main instrument of the study and it will be composed of two parts. For the data gathering procedure, the researcher will secure a permit to the school's division superintendent of Nueva Ecija to conduct the survey. After securing the permit, the researcher will ask permission to the principal to allow him to administer the questionnaire personally to the respondents to give them the background information. And lastly, for the statistical treatment of data, mean, standard deviation,